Okay, we'll just pick up from a little bit uh, what we were doing last time with the cults and then move in the second half. After the break, we'll move into solutions, uh, the solutions section. We saw last time that uh, David Berkowitz had been basically exposing um, the criminal history, basically, of the process church and had been uh, basically showing that uh, this church, what had come out of his work showed that uh, this cult had moved from New York after the uh, Son of Sam killings and had also enormous power in Hollywood, which in general means that they had power and control in the media. And a lot of stars, a lot of uh, uh, celebrities were involved with their order. We had uh, mentioned also the importance of the work of Alex Constantine. Uh, he's done lots of work, but uh, the most important book, I think, is The Covert War Against Rock, which will be very con it'll give a lot of confirmation about what we're talking about here. He goes into the strange deaths, the strange suicides, you know, controversial sort of deaths of people like Brian Jones, Bob Marley, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Peter Tosh, Jim Morrison, John Lennon, and uh, others. Even of them, um, uh, we, we have to look at the deaths of Mark Bolan and Janis Joplin, a lot of strange ritualistic elements there. Um, we have certainly questions about the death of John Lennon, no less his son Julian has also made some very controversial statements about the fact that he believed that his father was assassinated for political purposes. He doesn't buy into the, the official story, the official reports. And we saw earlier that even the people who were the relations of the Son of Sam victims also don't believe it. So we might sit at home going, oh, I don't trust the official reports, and then might feel even somewhat uh, self-conscious about that. And then you do your homework and find out that even the closest relatives have the same queries. Uh, he goes into, of course, the death of Bob Marley and shows that that was a murder and brings out information that uh, hitherto has never been reported. The death of John Lennon, uh, of, sorry, of Jim Morrison, who had ritualistic elements which needs again to be looked into, and why these people are a threat, but also never forgetting that there's just a ritual aspect to this. We're talking cult of Dionysus here. When the sun king falls, these sun kings, uh, sun children, the ritual that surrounds them, whether they know it or not, is basically an alchemical one. It's, mi it's a mimicry. It's like a, 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 it's based on theater. It's based on ancient ritual, Eleusinian rites, from Greece and much earlier ones. And of course, those are themselves patterned on the stars and the heavens. So the sun that rises in the morning as the young sun rises to its peak as the great hero, and then it falls into the underworld. So there's also a death ritual, which involves, like Samson, the, the, the uh, aging process, the losing of the hair, the cutting of the hair, treachery, deception, all sorts of underworld experiences. Death in water is a very alchemical setup or issue. Uh, th these elements need to be looked at. And also the dates at, at which these people meet their deaths is also kind of ritualistically important. It should never be forgotten. Jimi Hendrix, as Alex Constantine has pointed out, obviously it can be because these people also become politically active. It's okay when you're part of the bread and circuses, okay, and you're just like a puppet on strings and you're doing what the system wants and you're providing entertainment to bedazzle and, uh, as we say, enthrall the masses. But the moment that you start speaking up about political issues, then you become a threat, then you become a danger, because uh, you have now the audience of millions. Remember we spoke about that solar lunar quality, that we're already subconsciously able to project our own archetypes on some of these people? Well, that can also backfire as far as the establishment is concerned. What happens if that person happens to turn around and then say, you know, I have a higher calling. Now I'm going to use my notoriety for awakening mankind. Now you have a very d dangerous situation. And I believe that this was the case in, uh, certainly the case in Jim Morrison's life. And also you have the issue that if these people are any, under any form of mind control, which is, there's many kinds of mind control, what happens if that starts to break down? Your victim also can have a breakdown in their conditioning. This has been brought up by Bryce Taylor and, and Arizona Wilder and others. And at that point you become a liability. This is often happening. Of course, the Mafia had their hooks into the music business going back to the jukebox wars.
And then in World War II, the OSS started up a program called Operation Underworld, which entailed the actual recruitment of key mafia figures uh, to operate in Italy and the United States. Right? And after World War II, they continued this, this uh, brotherhood between the CIA and, and, the, and the mafia that continues to the present day. Now, under Operation Chaos, I mentioned that all intelligence agencies have been brought into the umbrella program. Well, the mafia was brought into it, too, because they were central to the music business itself, and they could be used to control and ultimately, in some cases, murder musicians who were outspoken in their opposition to the U.S. government. Jimi Hendrix was killed for two reasons. Uh, first of all, he had made statements in the teen press uh, calling for the Black Panthers to go to Washington, D.C. and shoot the place up. Secondly, he had done a, a benefit for Bobby Seale and the, and the Chicago 8. And that got the attention of the FBI and a program called COINTELPRO, which was a surveillance and assassination program. And it led to the murder of 28 Black Panthers. Tupac Shakur makes 29 because he was a Black Panther. Hendrix linked up with the Black Panthers, and for that reason, he was a dead man. But we certainly have questions about Michael Hutchins, for instance. And if you thought there was something weird about that death, uh, you know, you always hear about them hanging from some hook in their room and uh, sexual perversions, the typical story that's just made up for the media. It's almost like they have to wheel that out every time. And again, all the most closest associates go, no way. There's no way that this person would have ever committed suicide. I just had a phone call that day from him and he was talking about the wonderful holiday he's going to go on and the new things he's going to buy and the new girlfriend that's in his life. Next minute, he's dead. They find him hanging from a, you know, the ceiling in his, in his room. I mean, come on. Interesting in connection with him is that he was uh, married at one time to uh, Paula Yates, another blonde media individual. But the interesting thing there, and I actually closely tracked this particular incident through the years, and of course she went on and became the wife of this loathsome creature who dare call himself Irish, it's a travesty enough. Actually, he's Canadian-born Illuminati puppet Bob Geldof, and I think he was implicated in the death of Hutchins. It's a long story. I'd love to be able to have time to get into it. But these people have protection, and if they have something against you, they can call upon their henchmen to commit crimes in their names and have it all covered up once you have those uh, connections, those high-level connections. Uh, favors will be done. You do a lot, a lot of favors for them, and you'll have favors done for you as well. This is, if you watch that murder, if you watch the movie we recommended last time, Murder by Decree, or you watch Brotherhood of the Bell, some of the movies I've been referencing, you'll see exactly what I mean there. And it's pretty interesting that a lot of these people who meet their deaths either short time before or for extended periods in their life, did know a blonde female, which we've pointed out is a ritualistic element. And those blonde females then may go on to greater fame, actually. Or in the case of Paula Yates, move on to other celebrities. It's just a pattern. You, know, you have to look at all of these patterns. You can't really say for sure, but you need to look at certain things. Or there's evidence that some of these suicides, celebrities, are directly connected to sinister organizations. This, this, this is the case with River Phoenix, who was a part of the organization, the Children of God, which is, by the way, a, a, an offshoot of the Jesus movement. Remember we said, watch the names, because something that's called this now might have changed its name. You have to do the homework. And in fact, the leader uh, of the uh, Children of God is a guy called David Moses Berg, was himself investigated for what? Child abuse and uh, actually went and hit out with uh, Gaddafi in Libya when he was uh, being hunted. And we have to, there's also another group you should research called the Finders. Lots of groups, the Finders, the Jesus Movement, the Children of God. And even the names of some of these uh, celebrities are obviously not their real names. They are talismanic names, they're ritualistic names. A lot of uh, terms are used, like butterfly, like dandelion, like phoenix. These are ritualistic names, which not only tell you about their rank within these weird rites and cults, Kulum, for instance, you know, but they can also um, indicate rank.
you know, questions about Heath Ledger and the, and the swift decline. And these are just a few examples. We could sit here for three hours going through the entire suicide list of celebrities. Bizarre, bizarre ones. We have Jonathan Brandis. Um, what will happen is when the mind control breaks down or, or the real personality starts to leak out, it's then that they come along and tell you, oh, this person has personality disorders, like they did with Michael Jackson. No, what's actually happening is his real personality is probably struggling to get free. That's when they come in and tell you, oh, he's, 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 he's having a breakdown. They did this with Elvis. Uh, 